Yo, what is going on, everybody? Happy Monday, Monday evening. After quite the hiatus, we are back with another episode of the Ruel Report. My name is Luke. I'm joined by our co-host, namesake of the show, Mr. Ruel Black. Ruel, how are we doing today? Happy to be back. I am doing great, Luke. I am doing great, man. All right, what happened? It's been how long? Eight weeks since we've done this? <laughs> I have no idea. I know that I was out for like five weeks. Oh my God. What happened is your boy had a stroke and wow. It do I, when I tell you it was pretty bad, it, it was, it was pretty bad. Um, I couldn't speak straight. Uh, I lost like the right side of my face, the movement, um, couldn't move my right hand, couldn't remove my right shoulder. And I could barely walk. Like, I was walking kind of clipped. And uh, what happened was um, I got a blood clot in the left side of my brain. And uh, I wasn't supposed to be doing anything. Uh, recovery was supposed to take, like, 8 to 14 weeks. But uh, I did some stuff. And it took three. So, um, you know, I did some alternative therapies if anyone struggling with the stroke or anything like that um let me know you can just hit me up on um at black Roo. um the thing that i did was really helpful um i did like two sessions of it and um without it i don't think i'd be sitting here right now um talking like i am and um in full like capacity <laughs> I, I just wouldn't well, well, I will say that we were very, very glad to hear that. I mean, it was a scary situation. Um, but, I mean, amazing to have you back here with us. It was extremely scary, man. Uh, let me say this to people. Uh, if you have, like, a stroke or anything you feel is like a stroke, go to the hospital that day because you just never know where that blood clot can travel. Um, I didn't go to the hospital the next day, which I <laughs> realized later was very, very foolish because that blood clot should, could have traveled to my heart. So definitely <laughs> go straight to the hospital if you have anything like that. Um, don't worry about the money or anything like that. Just go straight to the hospital. Oh, Your for sure. I important. mean, health has got to come first. There's no, yep. no, no doubt about it. Yes, indeed. So, um, yeah, if anybody needs help with that, um, like, like to know what I did and what type of like, um, like tools I use, I use like, I got special kinds of balls and hand thingies to use to like, kind of work myself and work my, uh, wrist. Um, just, just hit me up. I'll, I'll let you know. It's, it's no big deal at all. But yeah, man, I'm glad to be back. Um, like certain people, like uh, Underdog Crypto, he held my show down. And uh, what's up, Jelly? And um, he like um, did some reviews on my videos while I was sitting in the hospital bed. And See, look at that. Everybody so, will always show up. Yeah, it was so it was so it was so nice. You and Aaron were checking on me from the hospital bed, man. Um, man, it was it was it was a really rough time. Like being in the IV in that freaking hospital room, believe me, it was it was not fun. But um, three weeks later, five weeks later, I'm here. Um, I'm black and I'm proud. Here we go. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I was going to say running the Ruel I'm report here, again. But you, you know, you know how that goes. I'm here. I'm you know. You know, I mean, like, you know, what I mean, like, I'm here, I'm Q, you, something, something. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm here <laughs> and I'm happy and I'm, uh, I'm stressy. That's another thing. Like, guys, like, stress, get all the stress out of your life. Like, it's not worth it. Yes, Shelly knows what I was talking about. <laughs> yes, there you go. All this right, so, Ruel. What's the read on the crypto market? I will say it's been some rough uh, weeks, months, etc. Without you, it really has. 
it was, it's really been some rough months on the uh, crypto market. Yeah. But, um, you know, same thing with the stock market, right? Um, I think many people did not expect there to be such a bear market. Um, and the Luna thing really impacted a lot of people. There are rumors that maybe it was, um, you know, BlackRock that kind of started the thing and that they got money from um, Gemini and everything like that. But really, that Luna crash, if you will, kicked off a whole bunch of things and a whole bunch of people being default. Um, and I think there was a, also kind of a, a delivery kind of short of the market. And um, places like Celsius, Voyager, many of them were like really hit hard. Um, yeah, man. But um, you know what? If you really kind of just looked at everything, you probably would have known it was coming. The same thing happened right after the last bull run in 2017. I think many people just thought it would be different this time because, hey, now uh, micro strategies is, um, you know, trading. All they do is buy Bitcoin. Um, Coinbase is a publicly traded company. We got a, a yeah, Bitcoin yeah. ETF. Like there's a lot. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think so on that part. Oh, yeah, we do. We do. It's called like Bitto, B-E or B-I-T-O. Oh, 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 it was that uh, Grayscale got blocked from becoming an ETF. Yeah, Gays Grayscale got blocked, but other yeah. people <laughs> other people have one. Um, so there's so much, there's so much institutional money in now. And, you know, like I said, Coinbase is publicly traded. Uh, many companies even hold Bitcoin on their ledger. I think Benzinga did at one point. I don't know if they still do, um, but square does uh tesla does um there's a lot there's a lot going on um where you would think okay the same thing's not going to happen but um still if you look at it um twenty thousand is still like way bigger than it's been since the last uh bull run in 2017 um the bull run before this so it's still pretty much doing pretty good the Bitcoin itself, but a lot of things got decimated. Um, even even Cardano, like if you look at it, it's still better than it was before the real big bull run. It was sitting at like three cents or something like that, and it's sitting at like forty four cents. So, um, however, fear is crypto winter, man. That's my fear, at least. Oh yeah, I'm. Are I mean, we going to be think, in a two year, three year crypto winter? I agree. I agree with you completely. Um, I think we're probably going to see a crypto winner until the next time Bitcoin halves, which is uh, May 4th, 2024. So we're about like 22 months out from that right now. I think we see Bitcoin like have, like stick. You know, of course, it's going to be like a sine curve and it's going to go up and down. But around from like 25 to like 25K to like 18K. Um, I don't think it ever dips under like 10,000. Um, because there's too much institutional money in there. There's too many people that have their businesses kind of based on Bitcoin. Um, I, I don't think I don't dip. I don't think it dips below ten thousand. Um, but but I'm thinking like eighteen is about the lowest. Eighteen to make maybe fifteen, um, but nothing lower than that. Um, however. I think that means it's a huge opportunity for people um, who can listen to stuff like the Ruel Report, watch my channel, darkhorsewatcher.com, to just start loading their bags on crypto and stock um, because we're not going to be in this for long. Um, two years, 22 months can just fly by. And um, they're so, um, oops, sorry. Somebody's calling you. There's so there's so many um, things that um, you can you can buy that are so low of a cost that we never thought they would be here. Like Cardano, like Solana, like um, Lucid Motors, like um, some of these Bitcoin miners. Um, a lot of things that are really like 
huge bargains right now. SoFi, Robinhood, there are huge bargains out there in both markets. And I think we can really take advantage of both and like kind of load our bags and be ready 2024. That that will really kick off a bull market. And generally about six months after the um, having, that's when things are really hot. So um, around like January of 2025, I think we can really kind of capitalize if we build those bags now. So, so that's kind of what I wanted to have to show on today. I have five coins that I'm going to like kind of reveal to you guys now. And I have five coins that I'm going to reveal in a um, video kind of like right after this. Uh, I'll put it out in like an hour or so. So you guys can see that. But five coins. And let's just kind of pretend right now. Um, in the video, I pretend that we kind of teleport to January 8th, 2025 um here i'm just going to pick up five other coins that would be kind of like five through ten on the list or six through ten on the list because one through five will be in the video um and we're going to pick those up and i'm going to point out some key points in these coins now understand the key points that i'm going to point out can also be applied to other coins so there will be things like okay it's iso two zero zero 20 or uh, 20022 compliant, which is the same kind of system that SWIFT, um, how we do all our payments in the US is compliant with. So I'm going to point out things like that. So if you know other cryptos that become compliant with that, there are compliant with that, then great. Um, certain things like, okay, coin exchanges. Um, some exchanges like maybe Celsius, maybe Voyager don't stick around. I think they will. Um, but uh, there's a lot that are just now growing. So those are things you, you would want to keep your eye on too. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, we can get into them. All right. Well, I'm going to let you take it away for a minute, okay? Sure. So um, number one. Wait, you got to show your screen, sir. Uh, I'm new to this. It's been five weeks. Yeah. We like looking at you, but getting your screen up there will be helpful. <laughs> oh, I bet you say that to all the co-hosts. Just you. <laughs> oh, Luke. <laughs> oh, God. I'm in a good mood today. <laughs> I got a message you, Luke. Thanks for going with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see here. Uh... Okay. All right. And we're about to get your top five. Is that correct for everybody just joining us? You will get we'll back. Get top five, I'll release in the video later on tonight. This will be six through 10. Oh, I get the worst half. Fine. Six through 10. <laughs> Go ahead. Start with number 10, and I'm going to be right back, Ruel. Okay. All right. For sure. So I'm going to do this 10 and not any particular order. Um, so we're going to start off. And I'm hoping you guys can see this. Okay, you can. Okay. We're going to start off with Hedera. Now, there's a few different reasons why I like Hedera. Um, so starting off, they're teamed up with a um, coin we've talked about before, LCX, which in this is an exchange. Um, and LCX is a member of the World Economic Forum. And I know how people feel about the World Economic Forum, I kind of feel somewhat the same way about some of their plans. But um, that doesn't mean that we cannot make money off of them. <laughs> Basically, it doesn't mean that we can't make money off of them. Um, would be foolish to think that, like, since they have so much money at their disposal, that things that they invest in aren't going to be worth anything because they will be. They'll have the money and the power to push them forward. So hence, we will, we should also make money by investing in them. We don't have to necessarily support their ideals, but we can make money off the things that they're pushing forward. Um, and you can see like a lot of the like huge power players like Boeing, like 
they pretty much control a lot of the U.S. Um, defense, like weapons and stuff like that. Um, Google, IP, IBM, and, you know, Google pretty much runs the internet, uh, YouTube, Google, um, LG, you know, they're big. Deutsche Telekom, um, which is T-Mobile. They own T-Mobile, which you got the, the symbol here. So Wig Pro, Nomura, like they're a huge set of companies. Shinhan Bank are behind Hedera. And um, if we come and take a look at them, they're sitting at like six cents. And we'll, we'll notice here when everything was bullish, bam, right? And uh, just keep this in mind. Let me just bring up another screen here. And I can show you this with a whole bunch of like crypto stuff. But let's go with just Bitcoin. You'll notice a pattern and a precedent that... Um, Every four years, it's bullish. And that four years correlates with the Bitcoin halving. So 2017 around here went to 20K. And that's kind of like why I'm, why I'm holding like kind of a resistance line at kind of 20K. Because that was the top out of the last bull market. And then you go back four years more than that, you see this little blip where it halved there. So every four years, we got this bullish cycle that brings it even more, more bullish. So now we're in a downturn of this bullish cycle. And of course, uh, all of you guys who are kind of chart heads out there will know this is kind of like the Wyckoff, um, it's the Wyckoff pattern. So right now, we're moving into a point where it's really low, where people start accumulating and that's what we should do. We should start accumulating, right? So um, just picture that we're out two years. We're going to have some of the same type of action. So the last halving was May, around May. And here you can see it kind of picking up. And like I was saying, sort of like six months. In this case, it's like four months out. We got the most bullish at bullish action, right? Right. So this was um so the last having there was May, um, sometime in May 2020. And then around January, we got some real bullish action right here. So we need to compile and, and pile into stuff right now and accumulate here. So that's what we're doing on this side of things. And that will be with Hedera. Um, okay, so we already saw all of its huge, huge, huge partners. Now, let's look at some of Hedera's deals. So, LCX and Hedera are really working on real-world assets to NFTs. They're really, really high on real-world assets to NFTs. And um, I want you to look at a video here. Let's see if I can find it. LCX and Hedera. Here it is. Okay. Now let's take a listen to what this is Lehman Blared. Uh, Dr. Lehman Blaird, um, co-founder of Hedera, and this is also um, Monty Metzger, CEO of LCX. So let's enlarge in this and play it. Move to computers just oh. because it made sense. Oh. And we used this from the beginning. How do you see the importance of tokenized assets in the future of tokenization? Oh, this is a big deal. So I think that ultimately pretty much everything of value will end up being tokenized. It just makes too much sense. It's the same way that 
we used to do record keeping on paper and it eventually all moved to computers just because it made sense. And we used to send information back and forth by mailing these shiny disks through the mail. How weird. Now it's all just over the internet. In the same way, Ledger can end up tokenizing everything. What that means is traditional assets like stocks and diamonds and um, artwork are all going to be to tokenized. But in addition, people are going to start tokenizing things that have never been tokenized before, like your own future revenue. You know, Spencer Dinwiddie is doing that. That's going to be tokenized. People are going to be tokenizing things like a kilowatt hour of electricity combined with carbon credits to offset it, glued together. People are tokenizing that. People are going to be tokenizing complex derivatives and futures and sorts of things. All of these things are going to be tokenized. Things that haven't been tokenized before. Um, man, Spencer had tokenized the ability for people to influence which shoes he wears at the next game. You know, this is not something that has ever been a market before. And yeah. so the ability to tokenize things and to send little tiny fractions of a value. I didn't even say that about the diamonds. Maybe I could buy a cup of coffee with a millionth of a diamond. You can't do that today. If I have a no. diamond, I can't really go to Starbucks and hand them a millionth of a diamond. But you can do that with tokenization. Okay, so there we got. Now he's talking about tokenizing real world assets. And that's really something like really um, that we should really think about because um, we're seeing the American dollar lose value here every day. If we can like tokenize, say, our car or tokenize, say, gold or tokenize diamonds, like he said, because LCX has done that, um, tokenize diamonds, tokenize gold, tokenize our future earnings. Um, that could be very, very like awesome in the future. Um, now, I don't agree with tokenizing carbon credits. I'm going to say that right off the bat. Like, I cannot, like, he was talking about tokenizing, um, like, the ability, like, a kilowatt hour of energy. I don't want someone saying to me, okay, you've used your 1,000 kilowatts of energy, so you can't drive or you can't turn on your lights. Get the hell out of here with that. That's not going to work. Tokenizing. But, but they, uh, but they might set it up, though, where there's, like, penalties or something. Do you know what I mean? That's like, what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you have your allotted, and then you have to purchase additional carbon. Okay. Yeah, see, that's what know. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, they set it up. Either there's penalties or you got to buy more carbon credits. Get the f <laughs> Wait, but that's, that. but that's how it works for businesses, isn't it? Like, Tesla no. makes so much money by selling its whatever, whatever pollution it's allowed to do to Chrysler and Jeep. Well, no, you incentivize to, like, buy green products, but you're not limited to, like, a certain amount of carbon credits. I know you're saying that, but I don't think so. With with no, with regard, no, you're not. If with, you're, are you if saying you're... for businesses? I think that's how it works right now. Oh, businesses! I have no businesses. Idea. That's what I'm saying. Like Tesla makes a ton of money selling its carbon emission it? allowance to like Jeep. Okay, I'm pretty my... sure it's like a very real life example. I understand that. Now that will be fine. But if you're talking about having like the regular man or the regular person pay for carbon credits, I'm completely against that. Mm -hmm. Because that's like, you're a sense putting an extra tax on energy. We already pay for whatever energy we get from the power company or whatever. But then saying, okay, there's an extra t carbon credit tax on like maybe gas, energy, um, who knows, like you can carbon credit so much stuff, like, and say that it's using carbon, I, I, I would, I'd be flatly against that. Yeah. Uh, but all the rest of the stuff he said would be perfect. Um, the downfall would be though, if you, if you had like, if you tokenize your car, for instance, I mean, it's kind of like stuff works now, but you, you tokenize your car and you can go default on like only selling like a portion of your car or using a person a portion of your car's assets um there would be there would need to be some type of um like protections in, in place for that so it's like okay the moment you default on that you can't just get your car stolen or it stops working or something like that there would need to be some type of thing there but 
I can see that really being awesome because um, instead of paying for things in fiat currency and having all these type of um, huge fees to transfer things and huge fees to like uh, transfer to different currencies, you could pay for like a cup of coffee, like you just said, with a, a millionth of a diamond or any other asset that you have that's valuable. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Like Luke could pay for like a coffee with like some like a portion of Benzinga ownership or something like that. Or uh, like, I mean, he wouldn't do that, but just, you know, like any anything of value would you could then use and uh, tokenize and pay for things. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, so that's why that's that's a, that they're working with Hedera on that. And then if we come over here and look, Hedera is also working with South Korea on making uh, a stable coin for the entire country and getting in on remittance payments. And if you guys don't know, remittance payments is a huge, huge business. Uh, MoneyGram and so many different people make a lot of money on remittance payments. Um, because as Americans, we don't do this as much, but um, here in Arizona, I know there's people that like have family in Mexico, so they send their American dollar to Mexico and they like their family can get a better value from that dollar. There are certain people that work in the um, like in Dubai and the uh, United Arab Emirates, like um, from the Philippines. And they send money back and they get a better value for that. So, like, remittance payments are huge, huge, huge things. So, they're working with Shinhan Bank to have stable coin, uh, their entire currency, and also to work um, with remittance payments. And I think that's what this article is going to go into right here. So I like to show um, my receipts, as the young folks say. Uh, bu 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 Where is it? I guess it'd be just easier if I just search for it, huh? Let's see it. And, okay, this is the wrong article, but that's okay. I won't go into it. You guys, if you want really more info on this, um, I did an entire video on Hedera LCX Partner, so I won't go into all of it. You can find out more about Hedera here, but then let's go into the next one that's really, really, really uh, important. All um, right. We're getting let's at see a it, Mr. Ruel. Big discount. That is... Chainlink. Now, if you guys aren't really a big geek and nerd like myself, you might not know what Chainlink does. So what Chainlink does is it's an, an oracle. You might have heard that phrase and it makes it sound really mystical or something like that. But really all it does is bring data that's outside of the blockchain, make sure it's valid, make sure it's not malicious or anything and brings it inside of the blockchain. So basically, Chainlink, they're the thing that actually made DeFi and all these exchanges possible because you know you have to make sure that all your prices on all your coins are kind of like the same across multiple exchanges or otherwise someone will exploit the, the uh, arbitrage. Um, you want to make sure that your DeFi is bringing in data the most fast, the most reliable, um, or otherwise someone can get in and exploit it. So um, really, Chainlink makes all of that possible by bringing in the data, protecting the data, and uh, making sure everything's valid and up to the moment, up to date. Um, and do you, do you actually hold this one? Well? I do. I do. Okay. Um, you can see it went as high as 50 bucks. We're getting it down here at uh, six. So we're getting it uh, six times 10 is 60. Uh, six times eight is 48. So it's like 8x 
to get back to the high. So um, really, we're we're really um, we're really cooking with gas. So so let me ask you this though: Where do you think the doubts come from? Right when I see a price collapse like that, it makes me think that there's a lot of doubters. Where do you, you think know, that that doubt comes from? So I think it just came from the entire exodus of the markets. Um, I think when people saw that um, the stock market was um, tanking, and then people saw Luna was tanking, <coughs> I think. Um, a lot of institutional money kind of flowed out of these things, and then there came the uh, um, the, the the regular little plebs like us too. Then we took out our money too, so I think that was the whole thing that happened there. And even though people might not like what I'm going to say, and I'm going to say allegedly, so no one can sue me, I think there's a little bit of um, targeted type of deals that were going on too because i think like once luna kind of got burnt uh i think that kind of opened up the whole market because that now meant that uh a lot of people that had luna on their books which a lot of people did like voyager like celsius a lot of them opened themselves up for insolvency um unfortunately but um, I think a lot of people um, like the Charles Hoskinsons of the world with uh, Ada Cardano, I think a lot of people who kind of been around the block and like really have been in the crypto game for a long time kind of knew that it was coming. Um, I think the people that didn't or haven't been in the game for a long time didn't know, just like Luna, when they, when they bought Bitcoin with their stable coin, they open themselves up for this. If they had not bought Bitcoin, and like I said before, um, before the stroke, uh, if they had bought Bitcoin, and, and uh, shout out to um, my guy King from Gentleman of Crypto, um, he was the first, like one of the first people who like kind of point this out and question it. If they hadn't bought Bitcoin with their stable coin, they never would have opened themselves up for this. All right, fair enough. So, so yeah, so Chainlink, and that's that's really all Chainlink does. Um, they're Oracle, but so many people use them as an Oracle. It's ridiculous. So that's something really to just kind of bet big on because you need the Oracles to keep the data from coming. Like you got, they gotta bring the data inside. So. So you, you got to have an Oracle. So that's why Chainlink, that, they don't need to do anything else with that. And you can see uh, if we go down here to come some of their partners, like some of the biggest uh, DeFi projects like Aave and all these other guys, they use them. Let's see. Ecos so here it is, yeah. Aave Compound. I just missed it. Aave Compound. Like Binance, like the, a lot of people use these guys. And you can see they have huge backers as well. Just like, um, so they got T-Mobile as backer. Um, I'm not sure about any of these other guys. But here we have huge exchanges like CoinGecko, um, Binance, Hube, Hube, Hubei, I think it's how you say that. Um, yeah. So Chainlink is a next one on that list. Let me go back because I, I missed the part where they have some of the guys that use them. But a lot of a lot of things use Chainlink. This is not even a half of their partners. Uh, Compound, Paxos, Gold, TruFi, Nexus, in ENS. So synthetics, tons, tons, and tons use. And it's like total value secured, twenty billion. I mean, they're doing all right. <laughs> they're doing fine. They're doing very fine for themselves. Um, mm -hmm. So next one in the list. Is Algorand. Um, 
Algorand, I this is my most used crypto because the fees like when you are, say most used, what do you mean by that? And what's up, Manny? Like you you actually use it uh, so like I'm in your like, na- normal operations of life. Well, if I'm ever trying to transfer crypto to another person, I'm using Algorand because the fees are small and the transaction speed is like literally it's done in like a minute or two minutes. If that mm-hmm. done, and I think they go through all their checks and they do go through all the checks on the blockchain to make sure everything's kosher and all of that other stuff. But for it to be that fast and to be so cheap, and it's like 0. 0.002 Algorand is what they charge you or something like that. It's amazing. And if we come over here, I think I have the article out. Remember, I was telling you guys about ISO 2002 compliant list, and we were kind of mentioning things like uh, Swift and all that. Hold on, it's going too fast. And things like that, they use this standard. Um, Here are a couple compliant cryptos. Where are they? I'm just passing them, I think. Okay, here they are. So... Dara, which we already talked about, but also Algorand. So the fact that they're already kind of compliant with this and you know that like regulation and crypto, especially after what's been happening, has been a really big subject. Um, You already kind of know and feel, okay, they're already complying to a standard. So it's more likely that they're going to be around. And like I said, their speed and like the the low fees that just makes them head and shoulders above the rest already um whenever i'm sending crypto to anyone for anything like i went and bought some helium miners and i was like hey you want to do the transaction in crypto and i was like yeah let's do it in algorand and i was like like, oh really no that's cool and uh coinbase to coinbase we did it it was like a minute and a half and we went about our way okay yeah no i (laughs) dig it um so so that's one of the reasons i really like algorand and i also like a ton of the project well i at least one of the projects on there um opulus and i think we've talked about this before on here but we'll go into it um remember how uh lehman dr lehman baird was talking about tokenization of like all things Uh, opulus tokenizes a song's masters so by buying an an nft with opulus you're actually owning part of the song and its royalties so they did a couple people a little pump uh kyle i'm not sure who he is and art ads i'm not you don't remember who kyle is no i don't he had that one song with uh bill yachty I spy uh, viral hit. That's the only sweet. one I know. So, so when you're getting it's the a good like, song though, really? Uh, well, I, I'm I'm sad I missed out on his thing. Maybe maybe I might have to buy him. But um, another uh, some other companies caught on to this this uh this whole type of deal. Opulus is like the like the first one I've ever heard of doing it. But uh, this company called Royal. They actually got people like Big Boy and Nas and Eminem and uh, Royce the Five Nine uh, yeah, to okay. get on their platform and sell part of their earnings. It's is impressive. NFTs. Very impressive. Um, and Nas actually gave up 50% of the ownership of his song. So it's cool for the rapper because it's like, okay, instead of you get 369k money up front for future ownership of your song or for like future earnings of your song so these people get paid out every quarter and at the same time it's really synergistic because it's like now you can tell everybody to go stream the song and you're almost paying yourself so you're also like a promoter of the song now because you know every time someone listens you're actually getting paid. 
So it's really synergistic in that way. Um, now, Royal, they're just selling the NFTs and they're going to pay people out every um, every quarter. Uh, one of the things that Opulus is doing, and I don't know if it's built out yet, is they're going to actually have a DeFi platform where you can stake and loan and do all these things with your NFT. So they're actually going a step further with it. Um, and this is all built on Algorand. And I, and I think it can definitely work because of how fast and uh, sweet Algorand is, which reminds me, I'm going back to um, Hedera now. I forgot to mention this. Um, I still want you guys to watch the video, but I, I forgot to mention this, and I think it should be mentioned here. Um, this is one project called Galaxy that they're building on uh, HBAR, on Hedera. And you see we got Ezekiel Elliott, and we got this guy. I know he was on Benzinga. I forget his name. He was on Bachelor, like Matt Jones or something like that. You remember his name, Luke? Mm, no. He was on a Benzinga crypto show for sure. I think with Catherine. okay. I mean, I believe um, you. I just don't remember. <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. Um, some fine girl. Um, and Spencer Dinwiddie, and um, Spencer Dinwiddie is kind of leading this charge, and this is going to be kind of like a Web three ish, like almost like a YouTube mixed kind of um, clubhousey type deal. So fine creators you love. Buy creator tokens, unlock special perks to the creators because you know, as much as we love YouTube, um, YouTube takes a ton of money from creators. And uh, what percent, dude? I don't know, but I know I'm it's a Spencer lot. too, Shelly. Sorry, <laughs> I know it's a huge lot, and I know, like, even for me, I got enough subscribers right now, uh, to be monetized, but I don't have the watch hours just yet. Um, yeah, I mean, I and you need so many views to make it worthwhile. Yeah, so it's like, so it's like basically right now, other than my patrons, like the only way I get profit is affiliate marketing and stuff like that. So I can understand why, like, okay, let's create these these different Web three type of deals that resemble more of a OnlyFans type of model. Because the reason they call it OnlyFans that we know like a lot of people might have problems with OnlyFans because who's on there. But the reason they call it OnlyFans is because it's not free. It's only for your fans. Your fans are paying to see you. So um, this 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 type of model makes a lot of sense because, of course, a lot of work goes into the prep, the all the things that we do to bring information to YouTube. Um, it really makes a lot of sense. And when you have backers that are celebrities like this, like Ezekiel Elliott and uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, you really have like you really have something there. You really, you really have something there. So I'm gonna try to get some coins uh, on this guy, and um, seems like it seems like it has promise to me. And it seems like they just like closed on 26 million dollar strategic funding. Like how long it'll take to get an app up and all these protections in the crypto, I don't know, but it seems cool because he also has deep pockets like Lehman uh, Baird talking about him. You, you heard him mention like Spencer like two times in the video with uh, Monty Metzger. So, so it seems like he has a lot of backing for it. So this is something that's built on Hedera, which makes me even more bullish on Hedera. And um, Opulus kind of reminded me that I needed to tell you guys like about that, even though this is built on um, Algorand. So, so there's that. Um, the next one I want to talk about. So we got uh, Hedera, Algorand, and Chainlink out of the way. Two more. The next one we're going to talk about is drum roll no <laughs> uh xrp now xrp i know a lot of people like oh aren't they getting investigated by the sec um seems I mean, like that is uh sort of yeah okay you lost me with that one that first comment but keep going 
<laughs> um, it seems like it's winding down. And uh, even though they're being investigated by the SEC, it seems like a lot of people still have confidence in them. Like, um, if we come over here, Japanese. Okay, there we go. So this Japanese e-commerce site that kind of sells cars, they decided to adopt BTC and XRP for payments for used cars. Why would they do that? They could pick, they could have picked anything. They could have picked ETH, they could have picked Matic, they could have picked any other crypto, but they chose XRP and BTC. Why did they do that? And they already know that they're under a case. So when I see stuff like that, that really bodes well for me. Um, and they sell like 5,000 cars annually. It really bodes well for me. And that makes me think that they're going to end up on the other side of this. And um, there's a, 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 a 17th letter group. You guys might know who I'm talking about and not the foolish ones because there's some foolish mis misinformation ones and there's some real ones. The 17th letter group, they really, really love this coin. Um, and there's been rumors forever that this coin was going to be backed by gold. I don't know. Um, also, I like some of the uh, projects that are run on XRP. Um, one called Sologenic. They also want to do kind of like like we just heard with Hedera. They want to tokenize things and um, put them on a blockchain and and tokenize like stocks and all these different things. That's that's the next. That's kind of like the next step. Web three step. Um, another thing with XRP. If we come over here to this list of ISO uh, two two o o two compliant ones, lo and behold, we find XRP on this list. Really cool, right? Um, another thing, they just released, or not just released, this was like 2021. Um, they released a version of a software that will enable users to make payments without the internet. I know, and I know it's a thing, like we always hear, uh, expect like hacks and all crashes and all of this other stuff, power outages. Imagine to be able to pay, make payments without the internet. So it's like, okay, now I don't need to like stack a whole bunch of cash under a mattress. Like this is like 1929 depression era. I can, you know, like do this and have it stored on a device or whatever. Um, and not that many people will know that it's actual currency. Um, so, so that's, that's extremely cool. And, um, and I don't know if you guys know about uh, XRP, but their whole goal is to kind of be better than Swift because Swift takes long clearing times. Uh, Swift, uh, when you try to process uh, different currencies, there's a huge payment processing thing going there to kind of convert to different fiats. Um, br bring in XRP. Uh, they want to kind of get rid of all of that. So they get rid of all those middlemen. They get rid of all those uh, currency um, exchange fees that you have to have for different fiats. And they want to send money just directly using their kind of crypto blockchain. They don't use a standard type of blockchain. They have their own version. But um, if they can enact that, and this, this is why I really think that they're really getting investigated by the SEC because if they have this already in place and they have this, it's better than Swift already. Ooh, we, a lot of people <laughs> would not like that. <laughs> a lot of people would not like that because it behooves a lot of people to have all those exchange fees, all this uh, clearing time. It behooves them to have that. So if XRP is faster than that, um, more efficient than that, then, um, a lot of people might not like that. Um, but here they are. They're ISO 2002 compliant. Um, and they have their own blockchain with other things on it. Like I said, Sologenic, Corium, um, XRP. 
is high on that list for me. Um, the next coin that we're going to go over. And this is our last one, Ruel? Yeah, this is our last one. Oh, baby. One coin, five minutes, and then we're hopping over to the other stream. And that's where we're getting one through five? Uh, no, no, no. I'll just put that out in the video later tonight. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Next coin is Solana. Could have guessed. So Solana, Sam Bankman Freed is really, he's really, really big in Solana, Solana along with uh, a Russian guy who kind of created it. Like they're both like really tightened into Solana. And I don't know if you know, a uh, shout out to uh, JJ Wentworth of um, Crypto and Down. Check out his channel. Um he he put me up on the game that Sam Bankman Fried's father wrote a lot of the tax codes for the US and he's really really like a known guy like quote unquote using like mafia language he's like a made guy you know what i mean so um <laughs> so when you got that type of like power behind you and they already um, I don't know if you guys know this, but they already purchased a piece of BlockFi um, and got them out of debt. And there are rumors that they may purchase uh, Voyager as well. Let me see. I'm not going to use the hyphen, so I hope it still helps me. BlockFi. I think he purchased like 250 million of BlockFi. Okay. Yep. So Sam Bankman Freed's uh, cryptocurrency exchange, okay. FTX, agreed Tuesday to provide BlockFi with 250 million revolving credit. So if you got this guy purchasing BlockFi, and then also Solana just came out and said, on, uh, that they're going to have their own phone. Which I believe is the precursor to having Metaverse be massively adopted. Yeah, I thought that was very interesting too. Oh my God. I, is, that's that's I the precursor. I thought that was interesting too. So um, here it says... Duh, 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 duh. This one's talking about Polygon's phone, but also Solana. It says, okay, this announcement comes two weeks after Solana said it's developing. Why does it keep doing this? Uh, it's developing its own blockchain phone called Saga, which will feature Web3 D apps and a store Solana Pay to facilitate on-chain payments and a vault for storing uh, private keys. So to me... That's really going to improve the mass adoption of um, of NFTs. So then, like, okay, you can have this NFT character, and, um, and here it is. And also, your it'll cost. Oh my god! If it doesn't stop moving all weird like this, uh, hold on. And see, here you go. Uh, most of the access happens through mobile phone. Sam Bankman Free, CEO of crypto exchange FTX and key Solana backer. So it shows you right here. Um, there's the receipt <laughs> uh, that he's a key Solana backer. Um, where was that? We were just reading where it costs like a thousand bucks and it'd be out like 2023. Okay. Yep. Okay. It'll cost about a thousand bucks and be available for de delivery early in 2023. So um, imagine then having your own NFT character that you purchase, right? And then you can get this character like through another coin called Boson. You could buy it Yeezys or something from Nike. And then you customize your character and also buy it in real life. The next step would just be, okay, you just walk into the Facebook Meta's Metaverse or any other metaverse like Seek or something like that. And now you have a whole identity, but 
that identity can be tracked because it's now attached to your phone, which is also going to track you. So, so now um, that makes a whole lot of sense for, for just like mass, mass, mass uh, putting in the infrastructure for metaverses. It, it's like, it's, it's extremely brilliant. They haven't said anything like that, but it's easy for me to take that couple steps of a walk to say, okay, yeah, so this is how you're going to roll through uh, metaverses. Right. What do you think about that, Luke? I think it's interesting, man. That The phone news is the most interesting to me. I saw that and thought that it was highly, highly interesting as well. <laughs> right. So uh, these are the five coins. Uh, tune in to my channel, darkhorsewatcher.com. That's dark horse like uh, dark horse pick. And I'll be posting it later on tonight. Um, the one through five, and it's going to be like imagine that you teleport to one eight, uh, 25. Um, yeah, one eight, 20, 20, 25. Um, and you purchase coins at this price right now. These five coins, I'm not gonna tell you what they are. Um, these five coins, I will tell you in the video, but I'm not gonna tell you right now. You purchase those five coins. How much money would you make if you invested two thousand dollars? So I think that's going to be really cool to see. And there's some other things on here where I went into Solana and Polygon with the phones. Um, I went into some videos: DAG versus uh, LCX, and then we have staking versus dividends. I think this is the perfect time again to buy. Uh, really good staking cryptos and really good dividend stocks. Um, it hasn't been this good since Rona. Um, and I wish I'd bought more uh, staking or more dividend stocks during Rona. People were saying REITs were dead, oil was dead, and oil's like one of the hugest stocks right now, sectors to buy right now. So mm -hmm. you can't really go on any of that. <laughs> um, these things just go on cycles and like there's a lot of things that i think you guys can buy that are perfect and i mentioned some in the uh in this video here give you one little spoiler of one semiconductor stocks there's still a chip shortage out there guys still a chip shortage and i found two great um semiconductor uh dividend stocks in here um, definitely you guys should take a look because their earnings have been increasing every quarter, man. Um, LCX partner, uh, icon, and then LCX partner, uh, constellation or DAG check out all five of these or all six of these videos. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and it's good to be back. Luke, it's good to see you, brother. It's good to see you too, man. Hit subscribe, hit like, and we're going to be back next week this time. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Cool. Awesome, guys. Happy trading. Peace.